Once upon a time, in the city of Benares in northern India, there ruled a wise king named Brahmadatta. His son, the prince, was exceptionally intelligent and completed all his education by the age of 16. Impressed by his son's wisdom, the king made him second in command. During this time, the people of Benares were deeply superstitious. They believed that gods controlled their fate, rather than their own actions. They prayed to these gods for blessings, like a good marriage, the birth of a child, wealth, or fame. In return for these blessings, they promised to make offerings to the gods, which often included the sacrifice of animals such as goats, lambs, chickens, and pigs. The young prince observed this practice and thought, these poor animals are also subjects of the king, and they deserve protection. The people commit these cruel acts out of ignorance and superstition. True religion should be about understanding life as it is, not about killing. It should bring peace of mind, not promote cruelty. I fear that the people's belief in these superstitions is too strong for them to give up. But perhaps I can find a way to turn their beliefs into something good. When I become king, I will make a plan to use their superstitions to benefit everyone. If they must make sacrifices, let them sacrifice their own greed and hatred instead of these innocent animals. With this in mind, the prince began to put his plan into action. Every so often, he would ride in his grand chariot to a large banyan tree just outside the city. The people believed that a powerful god lived in this tree, and they would gather there to pray and make offerings. The prince would join them offering incense, flowers, perfumes, and water, but never animals. He made sure that everyone noticed his devotion to the banyan tree god. Soon, word spread throughout the city that the prince was a true believer. Years passed, and eventually, King Brahmadatta died. The prince became the new king and ruled with justice and wisdom. The people grew to trust and respect him deeply. One day, the king decided it was time to complete his plan. He called all the leading citizens of Benares to the royal assembly hall and asked, Do you know how I became king? No one could answer. He continued, Do you remember how I often made offerings to the great god of the banyan tree? The people nodded in agreement. The king then said, Each time I made an offering, I also made a promise to the god. I prayed, If you make me the king of Benares, I will offer a special sacrifice, something far greater than flowers and perfumes. Now that I am king, it is clear that the god has answered my prayers. So, I must keep my promise and make this special sacrifice. The people eagerly agreed and asked, What animals do you wish to sacrifice? The king replied, My dear subjects, I am glad you are willing to help. I promised the god that I would sacrifice anyone who fails to follow the five training steps not to destroy life, not to steal, not to engage in wrongful sexual acts, not to lie, and not to lose control due to alcohol. I vowed to offer the flesh and blood of those who break these rules on the god's altar. The people, being so superstitious, agreed that this must be done to avoid the god's wrath. The king thought, such is the power of superstition that these people have lost all sense. They don't realize that if I sacrifice anyone, I would be the next to be sacrificed, since the first rule is not to kill. But because of their superstition, I can make this promise without ever having to carry it out. With confidence in the power of superstition, the king declared, Go throughout the kingdom and announce the promise I made to the god. Tell everyone that the first 1,000 people who break any of the five training steps will be sacrificed to keep the king's promise. And so, the people of Benares became known for strictly following the five training steps. The wise king, who understood his people so well, never had to sacrifice anyone. Moral of the story, sacrifice your own wrongdoings, not innocent animals.